So today you're going to watch a video talking about preparing for tests in high school. The first thing though before we get started is I want you to take a moment and a question is going to pop up um, throughout this video about four to five questions are going to pop up that you're going to answer and so right now I want you when the question pops up tell me how you used to study for a test in middle school that can include if there were specific classes that you studied for what materials did you use and things of that nature so take a moment and go ahead and do that so the fact is is that we are in week four of school and tests are starting to pop up on your um, radar. So I want to know, um, there are some things that you need to do before you start studying. First things first, you need to write down the test in your assignment notebook or if you're keeping a calendar because it's important to be able to see where these things are falling out so that you could prioritize your um, time. Talk to your teacher about your testing accommodations. We are going to get into more and more in our upcoming weeks about what your specific accommodations look like. Many of you though in the past have had maybe your test read to you. You've done it in an alternate location in a smaller room. Um, you've used extended time so you weren't able to finish the test in that um, class period so maybe you finished it in your resource. And a few of you have also that you get to have a test review guide in advance. And for some of you, that means it's a modified test review guide. So those are all important things to talk about with your teachers before that test happens. If you get a test review guide, complete it for homework, and I would complete it sooner than later. And the last one is have all missing work turned in before the unit test. It doesn't maybe necessarily help you specifically with that test, but some teachers do have the rule that if you don't have all your, um, whatever assignments aren't turned in, by the time you take that test, they turn to zero. So if there was a retake, um, a remake policy for homework, um, it's all due by the unit test. So you wanna make sure that you have everything done leading up to that test. A lot of times teacher will just tell you to study but they don't tell you what studying means. Um, so I have two columns on here. The left-hand column talks about just useful classroom materials, and they're in order of most useful to least useful. So if a teacher gives you a test review guide, that is golden. It is telling you exactly what is going to be on that test. Some teachers have test review games, such as Kahoot, or even the list vocabulary on Quizlet. I would hit those up and play them so that you're familiar with those questions because those tools are teachers are making directly for that test. So you know that you're going to see those questions or questions very similar to that on the test. Any unit study or reading guides that were used along um, with that and finally I would use your notes. Other handouts unless a teacher says you need to have this handout and use it for a test I, I I wouldn't maybe spend as much time focusing on them, but those four uh, class materials were, would be where I would go to figure out um, how to start. When you're going to complete a test review guide, there are just some really big steps to do. Um, first, answer what you know and then what you can find out in your useful class materials. Sometimes I see students hopping on just a Google search to figure out those answers and the problem is, is that you may not get the specific answer that you need or you might get an answer that is correct but your teacher's not asking you to know that part of it. So I always start with what did I learn in class and remember and what do my um, specific notes or review guide say. Um, identify questions that you can't answer. So when I'm going through a test review guide, I will put stars or circle those numbers that I can't answer but I need to go back to later and it kind of cues me that I need to go back. Doing the test review guide in advance gives me a couple days so that I can then ask the teacher for help. It may mean emailing the teacher um, to make an appointment before school. If you have some downtime in your class where you have independent work time, that would be a great time to ask. And also you could ask myself or Mrs. Savota while we're in LRC um, to help as well. And we could try helping you answer those questions. 
Um, and the last one, answer the review guide a couple days in advance because you want to be able to review that review guide multiple times. So it's not just I got it done and it stays in my folder. It's get it done and then I would maybe look at it, you know, once in the morning when you get to uh, school, read it over like in the student cafeteria or in the um, library, wherever you hang out in the morning. Look at it when at night, maybe once or twice, look at an LRC because the more you see that stuff, the more it's going to stay in your head. During your test, there are definitely a lot of things to think about. The first thing I'm going to tell everyone is use your accommodations, especially like if you are in one of the smaller classes or if you're in a co-taught class, your teacher is going to help take care of those. Um, if you're in a regular class, they're expecting you to advocate for them. So again, your test read, alternate location, extended time. Use those things the first time, the first test, and then if you don't need them and you don't think like, okay, I don't need them, then don't use them. But I would highly recommend that you use them. Um, come to your tests prepared. Have the correct writing utensil. So if your class is doing a multiple choice test on Scantron, you need to have a pencil. You cannot write a pen or it will not work. Have a charged Chromebook. Don't waste your class time having to run a tech and getting a charged Chromebook because that is, is not a, a good use of your time. If it's math, have your calculator. Um, and then if there's supportive material, have that as well. So if you have an essay and you're allowed to have a note card, have that with. If you're allowed to have a fact sheet for math, make sure that's in your folder. Um, for a multiple choice test, I always say look at, is it, at it as a process of elimination. Text mark the questions. Even if your teacher says you cannot write on the test, based on the fact that you get testing accommodations, you can you can mark it up and you could tell your teacher, Mrs. Sprangle said I can. Um, I would text mark the question, see if there's something in the in the question that you really needed to pay attention to. And then if out of the four, you're really struggling figuring out which one's the right answer, cross out the ones that you know are wrong. Because if you have four options, you have a 25% chance of making an educated guess. But if you're able to cross out one or two, your chan choice, your chance of picking the right answer goes up, you know, to um, 50% if you're just guessing between two of them. For a math test, always show your work. And here's why. A lot of times math teachers will give you credit if you have your work there, even if the answer is wrong, because they're at least being able to see your process and see where you maybe have a miscalculation and they could give you partial credit for that versus losing all of it. Um, and then before you hand in your test, check your answers. Um, I know sometimes we feel like, okay, I'm done. I want it off my desk, but check your answers. And even if that means the bell's going to ring in a minute, um, you have extended time, which means you could check your answers in LRC. That does not mean I am sitting with you and pointing out which ones are wrong. But what that does mean is you could take that extra time after you've, you know, looked at it, come back, reread, make sure that you, you answer them all correctly. After the test, check Home Access Center to see uh, grades being posted. Might take a teacher, you know, um, a couple days to do it, but if it's a multiple choice, they might get it in quicker. If the teacher has a moment in class where they pass the test back, look those over as well. See which ones you got wrong and why you got them wrong. Sometimes, you know, we don't like what we, we get on our test and that's okay. Um, many of your teachers may have a retake policy where they will let you retake the test. Um, to One thing though I'm going to point out is that that is a lot of times if you get a D or an F, you're allowed to retake the test and get up to a C. So don't say, I'm not going to study for a test, and then we'll see what grade I get on it. And then you're going to be like, oh, I got a B and I want an A. No, these are like you, you seriously didn't do well on the test, and the teacher wants you to retake it, you know, to go from underperforming to meeting the expectations. Um, after that, I would say learn from the mistakes to prepare for your next test because many teachers have the same format. You're going to see, you know, figure out math problems on a math test that you're doing the work. On global, you're going to see um, a lot of multiple choice for some of them. So I hope all these tips help you with your future test. Good luck.